Hey, what's going on guys? It's Raf. We're out here in the streets of Las Vegas, uh, testing out this brand new 50 millimeter F1.2 from Sigma. Uh, we're here at the open market and I wanted to go ahead and showcase you guys this lens and what it's capable of. So the quick lowdown on this lens is that it's a super light and compact 50mm f1.2, giving it the capabilities of shooting amazing shots in low light and stellar bokeh in any lighting situation. Of course, in my case, shooting during the day, I had with me an ND filter to help keep things exposed properly. This was more so for videos, which I definitely wanted to test out. Now, taking it beyond what a 51.2 is ideal for, I decided to hit the road and do some landscape test shots at Red Rock with it. Great performances closed up as well, and I got some pretty sweet shots of the bike plows out there. Alright, now with the out of the field testing out of the way, let's head back into the studio and talk more about the technical aspects of this lens. And as you guys saw at the beginning of this video, Sigma went ahead and sent me an L-series copy to play around with on my Panasonic S5 Mark IIe X. They also make a Sony version, so you guys aren't left out from the fun as well. Again, my first initial impression with this lens when I was out on the field, super amazing. That depth of field is crazy. If you're going to be shooting wide open with this lens, make sure you have a variable ND filter. Um, but yeah, you got autofocusing, you've got all the bells and whistles built into the brand new Sigma lens here, and it is a great one for the price. Of course, besides the on the field stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and showcase to you guys some of the other applications you're gonna probably be using this lens for. Uh, this is especially gonna be handy for you videographers out there that are thinking about picking up this lens for video. Um, so far, it's a really, really great lens for a lot of different applications. Let's go check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the exterior of this lens, right? It's pretty standard stuff for the Art Series lens. You've got a nice metal and glass, really solid build. You've got your aperture control right here. Of course, I had it on D-click because I wanted to test the video qualities of this lens. But there's also a click feature as well, which is really handy. So for you photographers out there, got that nice click. Thread size is going to be a 72. So if you have a 72 thread filter, you can go ahead and pop that on there to keep this glass nice and safe. And uh, yeah, for a 50 millimeter at this size, for 1.2, it's a surprisingly small and light system. So yeah, props to uh, Sigma for providing a lens such as this for the L-mount series and the S5 line and of any S series full frame system. And yeah, my thoughts, so far with it, it's a really great lens. Can't beat it for that price, right? And yeah, you definitely should pick one up. If you're trying to shoot fast with it, trying to get that nice uh, depth of field separation, or you're trying to shoot in more light. All right, this one is for my video peeps out there. I just wanted to go ahead and test the depth of field separation or the bokeh for video, right? So I went ahead and did a little switcheroo. We went ahead and uh, took off the GH6 off sticks and went ahead and put my S5 Mark II which is what I'm recording with right now. And as you can see, the GH6 is nice, sharp, and in focus, and the poster in the back for Sigma is out of focus. Uh, it's got a nice, really soft depth of field separation, and yeah, it's fast. So let me show you how fast it is. I'm gonna go ahead and walk in frame, and boom, focus. And now, as you can tell here, I'm in focus and my camera is a little bit softer. So yeah, you just pair that up basically with the S5 Mark II's fast auto-focusing and the, uh, the lens capabilities. It's a win-win all around. We went ahead and saw the depth of field separation, so we're gonna go ahead and kick the lights down low, uh, do some cool lighting, and see how it operates in low light. Let's go ahead and check it out. Alrighty, so we've kicked the lights down low, of course. We go ahead and kick on my Nanlite Pavo tube here for this low light test. All right, so we've got it on scroll. Uh, we have the camera set right now at 200 ISO, of course wide open, and so far it's looking pretty good, not overexposed, and yeah, so that kind of goes to showcase the capabilities of this camera system in low light. Of course, it's a little bit underexposed, so I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up every 200 increments just to show you guys. This is at 200, now this is at 400, looking a little bit better exposed here. And of course, this is at 800 ISO. Now I'm starting to look a little bit blown out here, a little overexposed. And of course, shooting wide open is really beneficial. Of course, I am sharpening focus. The background you can hardly make out right now, which is really cool. 
And yeah, I'm really impressed so far when I'm shooting wide open with this lens. Okay, so I went ahead and just dropped the ISO back down to 400. I think that's a pretty good sweet spot for the shooting condition that I'm shooting on right now. And yeah, shooting wide open at f1.2 is very beneficial for a lot of different applications. If you're a nightlife photographer or videographer, this is really good to shoot in low light. Uh, right now I'm shooting, of course, at 400 ISO, which I think is pretty ideal based off of the lighting situation that I'm using right now. Um, but yeah, if you're wanting to shoot in low light, have minimal grain, uh, keep your ISO down low, you can go ahead and shoot at a wide open f-stop of 1.2, which is really cool. Uh, another case scenario that'd be really useful for something like this is if you're wanting to do slow-mo, if you're shooting at 120 frames per second or 240 frames, which is crazy, you're gonna have to bump that shutter speed up. Uh, of course, you can compensate the, um, the underexposure by opening up your aperture a little bit more and compensating with ISO. So again, a really versatile lens with a lot of different applications. And yeah, there isn't really much else to say. This is a 50 millimeter f1.2 that is super small and super light and not too bad for the price as well too. If you guys are looking to pick one up for yourself, you can definitely swing on by to our website at bnccamera.com or of course come into the store to pick one up for yourself. As always, if you guys found the video helpful and informative, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe. If you guys have any questions with the lens, please be sure to leave them in the comments section down below. And if you guys want me to cover anything specific or in particular with camera gear, equipment, etc, etc, you can also leave it down in the comments section down below. Of course, I am none other than Raf from BNC Camera. You guys have a great one, and I'll see you guys in another video.